We are gathered here tonight in these hallowed Zoom windows to celebrate the finest that movie musicals have to offer. The time has come once again for us to lift up these chosen, select few as paragons of the best that the genre can offer. We reviewed many films this year, stories that touched our hearts and our minds. We pondered the complexities of creating art with Tick Tick Boom. We agonized through tumult in 19th century France in Les Miserables. We sought solace in the true understanding of love with Z O M B I E S 3. These stories have taken us to places we would never go, like the Palaces of Siam, a famed balcony in Argentina, to the animal run island of Nabumbu. We've calculated the square root of impossible. We've fought for unionization against capitalist newspaper owners. We've seen Cher pretend to be Meryl Streep's mother. <laughs> From an in imaginative chocolate factory to Harvard Law School, these institutions are revered for their inspirational value and their ability to inspire the human spirit. For the first time, we watched films in a different language, and we even revisited classic pieces from the original run of this very podcast. These films have brought us together and had us, as, had us ask ever important questions. What is wrong with Italian men? What's wrong with Australian gay men? <laughs> and will Disney ever really be able to recapture the magic of the original Mary Poppins no matter how hard they try? These stories have been told by legends, giants, pillars of the industry. Olivia Newton-John, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, and even Camila Cabello. So tonight, we honor these films and all their achievements, whether they be good, bad, or swimming in the vivid, rotating Technicolor. Welcome to the 2023 Showies. Welcome back. Hi. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. It's Hello. been so long since we've recorded. Mm. It's been a month. Yeah, we took a whole month <laughs> off. And honestly, I was thinking about it as, you know, we were, you know, working on our ballots, obviously. And I was thinking it was good, it was good yeah. because then I feel like I didn't have as much recency bias toward, mm. you know, your Willy mm. Wonka. And the other good, dragons. The good ones we ended with. The end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, RJ, how are you? You're in Phoenix. Yes, I'm in Phoenix. Hello. I had a great dinner today from my favorite Mexican restaurant. Um, I had I ordered a fish burrito and a cheese enchilada. I got a beef burrito and a cheese enchilada. So I eat? only so I only ate a cheese enchilada, unfortunately. And you didn't say or you got it to go. And we got it to go. So it wasn't um, until I was home. But it was, you know, it was a great cheese enchilada. So. Yeah, beef is tough. It was a ground beef. No, it was. Oh, it was like breaded beef. Like it was uh, so huh? good. Milanesa, breaded. I think, is what it's called. So it's like thin strips of beef oh, that's like breaded and fried. Yeah, the fried beef, kind of like a country fried steak. Almost. Yeah, yeah. So my brother's having a great lunch tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm in How my plant based era, Molly. Oh, yes. Except for fish yeah so for, i Pes get my pescatarian plant. yeah yeah how how was the cheese enchilada it was delicious um and my favorite part about this mexican restaurant is that even if you order to go there's a chips and salsa bar that you can just fill up oh so. i like Great. that yeah molly, molly how about you good living life i had my birthday last week so that's always fun oh. mm-hmm <laughs> Happy, happy birthday. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> happy, happy belated. Happy birthday, Molly. Is that why Rita was in town? Uh, they did because my nephew's birthday is also just a few days <laughs> before mine. So they tried to time their fall trip around then. Oh. Yeah. So they were there for your nephew and they were like, I guess we could squeeze Molly's in as well. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Great, got it. <laughs> I mean, at this point, the grand, it's the grandkids' birthdays that matter. I, I mean... I, 
as, as had, someone whose mom has like seven grandkids, I get it. Yeah. He had an inflatable foosball at his um, wow. like human sized foosball for his birthday party. Wow. And I just got sushi takeout. That's how I felt. So like, obviously yeah. you want to go to the eight year old's birthday. It's way better. Well, Molly, what's your go to role? Oh, yeah. Oh, spicy tuna. I know it's, you mm, know, sure. very Tried typical true. white lady, but it's mm-hmm. good. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think typical white lady would be like a California. California role, role. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, at least I'm getting actual sushi. Yeah. When my sister, (laughs) when my sister was like, I've started eating sushi. This was like, I don't know, 20, 2015, maybe 2014. She's like, I'm starting eating sushi, Adam, blah, blah, blah. She like lived in Virginia. I was like, great. What's your favorite roll? And she goes, I love a California roll. And I was like, okay, well, I love that for you. We got to start somewhere. Um, great. Well, I'm doing well. Thank you so much. It's getting dark, you know, at like <laughs> 2 p.m. So it's going great. It gets dark here early as well. And I oh, was really, really hoping here. I was really hoping it would be a big difference uh, moving south. But apparently it's like a two minute difference <laughs> between oh, Wisconsin no. and San Diego. So that has not been a benefit of here. But RJ, Arizona doesn't do daylight savings, right? So isn't it good there? Aren't you in the same? No, it's, it's still got dark. Oh, uh, maybe it was like because Chicago is like 430 here. It was mm-hmm. probably around like 530. But okay, still yeah, it's <laughs> it's yeah. where because California is, you know, in step with the rest of the country, it gets dark at 430 here. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's awful. I know something about it, like leaving work and it's dark. It's like, yeah. I don't know about yeah. that. I don't yeah, it's know. Like, guys. Did I work till like nine? What's going on? Right. Just bad vibes. Yeah. You're, it's like your evening is done before it's even begun. Oh, Half done before oh, begun. Gee. Oh my God. Thank you, Molly. Um <laughs> great. Well, should we um should we do should we do the showies? Let's, Let's do get, it. Let's give the people what they want, what they've been begging for, what they've been looking for for clamoring, all year. Clamoring, clamoring. Okay. Well, to refresh everybody in case they did not tune in last year, in case this is your first showies, first of all, go back and listen to last year's because it was great. Secondly, uh, how it's going to go is we have a, a myriad of awards that we are going to give out. Uh, Molly, RJ, and myself are each going to supply a nomination. And then we are going to debate amongst the three of us as to which of those nominees, and sometimes maybe not even one of the nominees that we talk about, ends up with the coveted award. Um, there are There is a new category. Well, there's a brand new award this year taking our total... Of uh awards from 19 to 20 that's very exciting um and we have some listener submitted categories for the first time uh as well which is also really fun so um i had a really fun time working on this while i was supposed to be doing work today it was very fun for me but i did feel like i will say this i felt like this year i had a harder time remembering some of the movies and i don't know if it's because we had like they were like just more meh films we watched this year but some of them, I was like, what happened in this movie? Yeah, it felt like we had more meh to like amazing. We could talk three, four hours about a movie. So yeah. it was actually hard to think about like, um, because we had like big, um, we had big opinions about the movies last year. Because I think we wanted to come out strong of like, let's do mm. something that we know Adam will hate, Molly will hate. Yeah. <laughs> and I will like, because I'm I'm the one in the easy, middle. Easy to please. Easy to please. Let's start. Let's start off strong. Let's start off with the horniest performance in a movie musical. Oh, wow. We're going to dive right into that. Okay. Uh, In the great circle of life, sex sells. And these horny performances really display just how much. Um, I'm going to go first. Okay. I'm going to go first. I did the same thing as I did last year where I had three that I was choosing from. And then I will tell you which is the official nominee. So for horniest performance, <laughs> um, my ballot consisted of Gerard Butler in Phantom of the Opera, who I think is like weird, weird not weirdly horny, because I do think that's just the role, but I think it is a horny performance. Um, I also thought of Julia Cortez from Priscilla, Queen of the Desert and her infamous mm. um, ping pong ball ping scene. Ping pong performance. Oh. Um, yeah. But I ended up going with the men in the crowd from Gypsy. That is oh. who I chose. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Just the general assemblage of men yeah. watching striptease. So that's my nominee. Hard my nominee are horny men. Yeah. Hard to argue with that one. That's that was a good take. Molly, you're up uh, next. I went for what I feel is kind of one of the obvious answers, which is Antonio Banderas and Evita. Um, I think 
bringing a chemistry to the role that I really wish Madonna had been matching um, mm. in terms of <laughs> the connection I felt like he had with Evita and just his connection with the camera. You know, there's something kind of kind of kind of there. So, yeah, uh, I feel that he was the horniest performer of the season. Strong choice, RJ. Um, so I, I didn't interpret, well, we'll see. I, <laughs> I kind of interpreted this more as sexual tension as a por- uh, as opposed to like mm. horny performance, which I guess like, you know, if the, if there's good chemistry and that's like naturally there when maybe there probably wasn't intended to be sexual tension, mm. but you know, maybe it's like the, the, the performers are, are just so good at their craft and they're so passionate that it just you as an audience member get like, oh, I f- feel like I'm getting some tension in here. So I am going to be. Um, I am nominating David and Jack Kelly from Newsies. I said this. Ah. In the, oh, I said this in the it felt like something was there. Yeah, they were both so passionate. They were both like they just wanted to get it done, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> But like so focused on like, I need the other person's help to do it. I don't know. There was just and maybe they're just they were very, you know, very attractive, very, you know, they were great performers. So strapping maybe it was there, maybe it wasn't. Yes. Well, these are our nominees. OK, uh, Antonio, Dave and Jack, men in the crowd. Interesting that it's always men. Women it's are not allowed always, to be horny. Men, yeah, men are not. Uh, yeah, well, I do believe that we. <laughs> came up with this category due to Michelle Pfeiffer being on top of a ladder in That's Greece. True. Yes. So I, true. I don't, I don't want to, you know, critique us that too should much be the that. Na- I think that should be the name of the award. The Michelle and Pfeiffer it, award. And I will say it from- does, it does yeah. feel like the follies is the juxtaposition of the, of the horny uh, the men. Is right. Because the- men feel sexual desire and women are desired famously. Yes. So, yes. okay. Yes, Molly. Yes. So you got you get it. it, Molly. <laughs> you finally get it. <laughs> um, I'm going to go. I actually agree with Molly. I'm going to go with Evita. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think so Antonio. too. I think there's something, I think with your reasoning specifically of like, you, we could have had Madonna really access that sexuality. And we, we said that like, it felt like she made a point not to. Yeah. To like, try to like act, to be like, look, I'm an actress. I can do this. <laughs> the way you said that. <laughs> Tried to act. <laughs> okay. Um. Next. Um, next we are going to go with a season specific award. This is our animation excellence award. This art form has a way of not only doing the impossible, but also costing a ton of money and time. We honor these films tonight. Great. Um, okay. I said here, my, here, here was, here was my thought process. Okay. Okay. Um, Don't name I, every single animated film that we watched. <laughs> uh, There's only a, a finite number. Um, I could have said Pete's Dragon, but I didn't. I could have said <laughs> Xanadu, Don Bluth, every- but I didn't. So I chose um, the the bowl, the China Bowl scene from Mary Poppins Returns. Oh, oh interesting. Tell us. Tell us why. Um, because I just I really liked that it was hand drawn. I liked that they pulled the old. I mean, I this was all info the info that we found out, but I like that they pulled the old animators out of retirement to work on this project. I mm-hmm. felt I feel like there's a lot of that really classic Disney whimsy in that scene. And while I don't think the movie on the whole stands up as like a great piece in comparison to Mary Poppins, I do think this scene is like a standout visually and mm-hmm. does work really well if you juxtapose it with the like jolly holiday sequence from the original. Right. Film. Mm. It's definitely a highlight of that film for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Molly? Molly? I love doing the showies because I always am worried that like I've answered the thing that everyone's going to say, but then you always have different things than than I do, which is great. <laughs> I'm sure that we'll run into some duplicates, but it's just so great. Like I kind of forgot about that scene even existing. Um, I have chosen the introduction of Z-O-M-B-I-E-S-3. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because I, I, I thought about this. I did yeah, think about that. That was one that I was thinking too. Um, I remain so impressed with the amazing exposition of that Mm -hmm. film. Um, Mm -hmm. I just, I was dropped straight into a third film in a series and I had zero questions about the universe Absolutely, um, due to the amazing animation sequence that they had before. Now, to be fair, that is more to do with the clarity of the the script and the voiceover (laughs) than the actual animation itself. But I think that that sequence is a very strong example of filmmaking. Great. Amazing. 
I think I think Sami's three might run away with a lot of awards. Love a lot of awards. <laughs> I know. I, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of enthusiasm in this corner. She's she just gonna <laughs> <she's> sweep. <laughs> RJ. The zombie sweep, famously. Well, they'll remember the showies. Um, I also went with Mary Poppins Returns, but I'm actually picking oh. the bathtub animation scene. Oh, the CGI. Okay. The can, the, can you imagine that? So can you it, imagine this? It is a lot of, ima- of animation. Um, I just, I liked that. I felt like it was a good, strong beginning to like, we are jumping in into Mary Poppins Returns. Like, this is still the same kind of magic that you'll get of like, she will transport you into different worlds and makes like your daily chores of like taking a bath super fun. And I liked that the bathtub was a practical slide. I liked that there was like elements. For- <laughs> no, but I mean like, I, I, and if you let me finish my sentence. And I like that it used the practical effects into like the animation. It, it like wove mm. them together. It, yes, uh, it yeah. wove them yeah, yeah. together. Which is very much like why Mary Poppins was so like yeah. iconic was because it did that very well. It so, did that. It did that. It did that. And I thought their outfits were really cute. Like the like the like um the the classic like beach looks. Yeah. Old fashioned yeah. bathing costume. Yes. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to argue against Molly's, even though I like your answer, because I don't know how much animation Nation. they're actually it's doing. Yes. The work there. Yeah. Well, I don't, I just think like, it's a lot, it's like they do like the, I don't even know how to describe it. You know where it'll be like a still, and then they'll like have a piece of the body part move that's like very slowly. Yeah. Yes. Like, like that, that sounds like very advanced to me. It's totally yeah, very advanced it, I mean, drawing sounds very advanced to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, well, I was just think... <laughs> Go ahead, RJ. I was gonna say motion was included in animated cells, and you know, I think that counts. I mean, I I will stand by the fact that it is it is animation technically, um, but I do think that if we're actually going on like the animation itself was good, then Adams is the clear winner to me in terms of like thank you the quality of the actual art form. Sorry, that was RJ. Happening there. Sorry, maybe RJ. if they maybe if they made those dolphins that jumped over them a little bit cuter, we could have gone mm-hmm. with that. It was one, just so CGI. It was. It was, so CGI. It was very CGI. I think the 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 porcelain bowl, like you could the texture of the thing that they were in, like that added the element to it. Like it looks like you were in yeah. like a cracked bowl, basically. Yeah. And just those character designs, those like really classic, like they turn, they they, they, they reminded me actually more of, uh, instead of reminding me of um, the first Mary Poppins, they reminded me of some of the animal designs in the bed knobs and broomsticks scene. Mm. Like what those animals, like they're kind of like long anthropomorphized. Wow, energy. no nominations for the full soccer match. I'm shocked. Or, or beautiful Briny, yeah. Well, if the category were longest animation, longest scene, animation then the soccer match would be running away with it. <laughs> um, okay, next we are going to go with one of our brand new listener submitted categories. Okay, we're very excited about these. We got a bunch of submissions and we only chose four to make sure that this didn't go on for three and a half hours. Um, Tonight, uh, RJ, can you intro us to our new category that I I have clicked on the Google Doc so you can read which one I have clicked? Oh, yes. (laughs) Yes. Um, Look, it's no secret. We all have our own trauma. And it's no secret that we three went to a Jesuit institution. So tonight, our expertise in this uh, will will come to light as we award the best use of Catholicism for tonight's showies. Amazing. Thank you. This is the um. We should have named it. It's what uh uh. What's his name? The the Je- what's the Jesuit guy's name? What's Saint Ignatius of Loyola? Saint Ignatius of Loyola. Ignatius of Loyola. Now, of Loyola. I think we should call it the Sister G- the Sister Jean Award. Sister, Sister Jean, Jean Award. Award for that the best is, use of Catholicism. Best use of Catholicism. Yeah. That's Absolutely. right. Icon legend. Icon and legend. Bas- <laughs> basketball star. Basketball star. Okay, so I had I had options. Okay. Yeah, I'm shocked. Sure <laughs> I thought of I thought of the entirety of nine as like an yeah. Italian piece mm-hmm. of filmmaking. I mm-hmm. uh, did not pick that. I thought of um the Angel of Music referenced mm-hmm. in Phantom of the Opera. Mm-hmm. Um did not pick that. I went really earnestly with this one. Oh god. And I picked the themes of Les Miserables. Oh. Um, because I she she did the thing, girl. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. 
famously the most positive portrayal of Catholicism of anything we've ever covered on this podcast <laughs> and probably all of musical theater. Well, I guess we haven't done Jesus Christ Superstar or anything like that yet, but yeah. Yes, but I don't know how Catholic Jesus Christ yeah, Superstar that's, is. Yeah, it's oh. Christian. But yeah. as a Catholic, yeah, that'll be a good. But as a Catholic, but as a Catholic, Catholic. <laughs> but as a Catholic, <laughs> it's fashion. It's, it's fashion, but as a Catholic. <laughs> so that's my. Um, mine is, what's the line in Les Mis? To see the face to, of to, to love, love another, another person love is another to see person. the face of God. God. There you go. So that's my nomination, Les Mis. Molly. Uh I thought about Lemus as I was contemplating this category, mm-hmm. um, but I actually did go out down a phantom route and I'm going to nominate <laughs> the candles in the phantom's lair. <laughs> <laughs> it's not explicitly Catholic. It's not explicit, but, but it is. Everything about Everyone it is Everyone knows. Because you know what Everyone Catholic knows. is? Opalance. Yes. Oh, burn. Burn. You burn everything. <laughs> everything. Yes. Uh, and there's just... Just, a little yeah. coin box in the corner, you know, just put a little donation in there when you light your candle. Absolutely. I just can't think of anything more Catholic than a room full of candles. So uh, I have to nominate it. So funny. Great. I nominated, um, I went with the nine route and went specific to uh, a call from the Vatican, which mm. is the number that, um, oh my God, what is her name? Penelope Cruz. Penelope, Penelope Cruz. Cruz's character, yes, um, sings and the whole bit is that um, Guido saying that it's uh, it's the Vatican. And it's like, yes, Monsignor. Yes, yes. And she's fully like, come in. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> hi, mom. Which, <laughs> uh, and, and, and what's more Catholic about uh, than, you know, like picking and choosing what virtues you uphold. I feel oh, like. absolutely. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that absolutely. is very Catholic. Cafeteria Catholics. I yes, was trying to figure yes. out, I was trying to figure out if I could do, um, if I could eat, do do re mi somehow. But I know. Like, I was not trying really to. anything Catholic about it. Shockingly. Wasn't there, there was something on the walls that we were pointing out that they were just like ubiquitous crucifixes or. I think they were just, yeah, just, they were just or everywhere. Something. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was subtle. Yeah. Okay, so RJ chose um I think you know Mickey's uh you know feminization I think is very Catholic. Very Catholic. <laughs> sure. Her choosing Mickey's, to be a mother. Mickey's instead. sundress at the end of Do Re Mi <laughs> <laughs> is extremely Catholic. Um I'm going to let someone else decide cuz I like mine. Um, yeah, well, I like mine, so I, I like mine. <laughs> Well, too bad. <laughs> I do. You know what? I'll give Molly points for creative, uh, mm-hmm. you know, detail oriented nomination. So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll vote for candles because that's very true. I I am in my mother's house right now and there's a candle and it's not and something... and like not scented candles, like oh, no. candles. Like, yeah. no, the scent comes from the incense. We all know this. <laughs> this... <laughs> but the candle, it's also like something about the candles coming out of the water and then lighting yes. immediately feels Absolutely. very like it's a it's a it's a Christ miracle. Like it's yeah. the water into mm-hmm. wine. It's something absolutely it's something beautiful about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a midnight vigil, you know. Oh, Ooh. yeah. It's Easter vigil for sure. It's Easter vigil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this year, I have named all of our big, big awards in honor of the films that won last year. So in case oh. you forgot. This year, it is the Fosse Award for Best Director that gets it because famously, he directed Cabaret and we were like, slay. Here's the intro. For every director of a movie musical that doesn't know how to film a dance sequence, doesn't know how to distinguish between singing live or dubbed, there are others who excel in just these areas. They are masters of the artifice, which is the beating heart of a movie musical. Okay. Okay, artifice. Okay, artifice. Okay, uh, director, I... I will say I was I thought of nominating Paul Hone for Zombies Three Z O M B I E S Three because he did the damn thing. He yeah. did the damn thing efficiently and coherently, coherently, and it was cohesively. Yeah, cohesively. Yeah. Uh, I thought of Mervyn Leroy for Gypsy because we screamed about that that train platform kind of sequence for Absolutely. thirty-five oh, yeah. minutes, I believe. Um, but I went with probably the obvious answer on this list, which is Lin Manuel Miranda for Tick Tick Boom. Mm. He just, I mean, if it, if the award is director that gets it, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's pretty clear. So that's why I went with um, Molly. We have our first 
overlapping category because <gasps> I also wrote down the middle of Miranda for Tick, Tick, wow. Boom. I think you can't deny it that he gets it on a very deep level in terms of what makes a musical work. And yeah. I remain impressed with his directorial film debut being uh-huh. this high of quality. So that is my actual nominee. Although I think I should also say my runner up being Kenny Ortega for Newsies mm. um, because oh. that is another, I mean, just longstanding director that gets it in the movie musical. Oh, genre. for sure. Uh, absolutely. Yes. In a way I that I would, true. I would never want to see him direct a non-movie musical. Like I'd be like, this probably won't be good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, stretch yourself, Kenny, if you need a break, but you've been turning out consistently good work for, I feel like, 40 years at this point. (laughs) Uh, RJ? Wow. We have our first three. <gasps> sweep ever? Yeah, we have our a first sweep. sweep a, clear, I think. a clear winner. It is a clear winner. Wow. I also pick Lynn Manuel Miranda for Tick Tick Boom for the sole fact that we, our biggest thing about movie musicals is the people who make it should like what they're making absolutely and you can tell that lin-manuel has such a reverence to the story and also mm-hmm. just to the art of musicals but then also movie musicals that he was able to like kind of use all of that very creatively and still be very signature to him like we talked about the like the hip-hop segment but then also like being able to go back and forth from like the framing device of it being jonathan larson performing his one-man show to like the the actual scenes and it was just very, very well made and very effective. So he did a great job. He it did a great true. job. Yeah. He is a director that gets it. He is the director that gets it. Yeah. Like the definition yeah. of it. Yeah. So congrats, Lynn Manuel. You've you've won you haven't won an Oscar, but you know what? You've won a show. We? We're gonna go for the set the the Susan Sontag Award for Camp Excellence mm. because it is Molly's turn to read. So I think it's it's only fitting. It's only fitting that you present your peers, um, right? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. My academic very much held up in a very similar way that she is. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Sontag Award for Camp Excellence. Susan Sontag, beloved patron saint of movie, movie musicals, once said, "Everything remembered is dear, endearing, touching, precious." At least the past is safe through. We didn't know it at the time. We know it now. Whatever that means. Here are the nominees. <laughs> it's a real Susan Sontag quote. I just Googled Susan Sontag quotes. Amazing. Great. I also didn't read that ahead of time at all. And I panicked about my way through. So I'm glad I got through it. You could edit. You um, did it. Okay. My. Okay. Okay. Sontag. Okay. Camp. So I would. I, I'm curious what people pick because we had some like deliberate camp. Uh, I feel like in play camp this that year. was trying to be camp camp that was trying to be camp but then yeah. also like camp that was like we understand camp and we're presenting you these people doing yeah. camp you know what sure. i mean right, right. so the naive interesting. camp and the knowing camp yeah yeah, yeah. so i thought of zombies three i will say <laughs> uh <laughs> I mean, she's got to win one. I can't somehow, believe truly you know? when I was looking at this list, I kept being like, this really was one of my favorite movies that we watched this year. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I do think it does speak a lot about, I think the, the movie is good, but I also think it speaks a lot about the fact that our roster was not super strong. Was not- <laughs> <laughs> um, she's shown, she's shown in a, in a mid, you know, mid the mid off. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought of Xanadu. Which I think is more, you got it. I think it's more naive camp, to be honest. I don't think mm-hmm. they, they thought it was going to be what it was. Um, but I will be honest. I am picking the title Do Re Mi. Just the Ooh. title. <laughs> Using their three names. as uh-huh. the, I mean, that is so, so good. It's, it's so like good. galaxy brain shit. Like that's <laughs> yeah. next level. It's so good. So that's my nomination. Don't worry me. And title from like alone. the level of like the characters, but then also the actresses. Like it. it runs the fact deep. that their names yeah. match their real life name. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> uh, Molly. Amazing. Um, I will say I also thought about nominating zombies for this. Uh, I, <laughs> but I felt that ultimately. The camp came from our reading of the film and not from what it was presenting. Mm. Um, it's actually very sincere and it's doing a good job. And so it's like not really camp for that reason. Um, so I did go with the finale roller skating scene in Xanadu. Oh. Yeah. Even though at the time of watching, I was like so tired by the time that that came on that yes. I was so done with it. Mm-hmm. But thinking more about it, thinking about it as a thing that does show at uh, Musical Mondays, mm-hmm. you know, it felt like, it was the truest example of the naive camp um, that Sontag would have been so proud of. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what's his name? What was the guy's name? Gene Remember? Kelly. Yes. Gene. Gene Kelly roller skating around that damn rink. Amazing. Amazing. Never forget. <laughs> RJ? Well, I just, yeah, I remember our conversation because we we said, like, was it something that they thought of, like, well, roller skating is almost like the new dance of this era. And what better way to show Gene Kelly that, you know, he's with the times and by having him master also, like, the dance of now, which is roller skating. Let me also say on that podcast, I said, living in Southern California now, I understand the roller skating craze because there's so much concrete here. And <laughs> But yesterday I went past some skateboarders by a transit stop and I thought about Santa do again. And so I just, I just want to say the film, the film lives with me. The film yeah. lives with you. It resonates. Yeah, it resonates. I was, yeah. Today, my brother was playing all over the world, like over and over again <laughs> today. It's, so it's it was like, timeless. oh, he's campaigning. Yeah. RJ, what's your choice? Is that your choice? No, I oh. did write two. I was choosing between either or. And so I would have a, you know, a second option if someone did write it. I didn't expect that one to be the one that was that someone else would say, because I wrote specifically Gene Kelly roller skating. Mm. In a Zandu. But my other option that I did was the finale scene of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. The not the cock and the frock and the rock the actual performance that they do when they're in the yeah. casino. The, yeah. the, 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 the um, finally lip sync and oh, oh, uh, oh. specifically the Sydney opera house costumes. The Sydney opera house costumes. Yeah. I like just watching it, just the idea of like, you know, they gen- <laughs> like this character is like, I'm going to create such a, like a show stopping number about Australia and like having the performance be like, <laughs> you know, Bernadette, like not selling it at all. But like these costumes are just so hokey, but it's just too like performing to a bunch of like people at a casino. Like it was just so great. And we all love the costume so much that the the Sydney Opera House like sticks with me to this yeah. day. Mm-hmm. I like the layers of this too, in that it is like the scene is knowing camp yeah. in the film, in our watching on the layer of the film, but then in the in the world of the film yes it is naive camp, naive camp. because it yes. is the, it is the completely deadpan reaction of the audience that yes. makes mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. into camp yeah and like they're doing it like this less. is this is literally like his like magnum like magnum opus yes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah mr holland's opus absolutely yeah <laughs> um i i'm gonna go with rj i'm gonna go with the sydney opera house Oh, I was going to say maybe we have to give it to just Gene Kelly in Xanadu oh. since both of us mentioned oh, true. him. So rather than the, the scene, oh. but like just the man Gene Kelly in Xanadu. Gene Kelly in Xanadu is camp. Gene Kelly, it's I mean, that, just saying that. Wasn't camp. it his last film too? Didn't we talk about that at the time? The fact that that was Gene Kelly's last film is camp. And that he essentially did it because it was so close to him. Like he was like, oh, it's just down the street. Sure, why not? Yeah, he, felt, he was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> not too much out of my way. Like, I don't well, have to deal I'm with traffic. Doing, yeah. He's like, I don't, I'm not doing that much. Why not? Great. So we award Amazing. Gene Kelly and Xanadu. <laughs> Friends, enemies, colleagues, aliens. <laughs> A myriad of words describe some of these delectable performances from supporting players in movie musicals. These are the nominees for best supporting performance in a movie musical. Um. Okay. I I did go earnest with this. And not a bit um, too. Yeah, I did too. So I I thought of Antonio Banderas from Evita. Mm. Um. I thought of uh. Robin De Jesus from mm-hmm. Tick Tick Boom. Um, but I went with Marion Cotillard in nine. <laughs> because yeah. she ate that up. She yeah, was she, she is did. so good in that. And she's the fact that she's like probably the only good part of that movie is yeah. really incredible yeah. as well. Yeah. So um I think she does in fact elevate the film to something that I was able to at least think about for these awards. Right. Otherwise, yeah. I would have been like, no. It would have been all nine the takes home nothing. Yeah. 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 She so she my... really does bring she brings a different texture and tone to that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, in a really impressive way. Oh, that's not this one. Um, my nominee hmm, is Helen Broderick as Madge Hardwick in Top Hat. <gasps> yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah
<laughs> yeah. Um, I think her, I mean, back to camp, but her uh, presentational mugging kind of performance as the wife of the guy that gets caught up in this whole, the woman thinks that the guy she likes is him and her husband is she. And I mean, it's such a funny setup. It's so classic cinema. Mm -hmm. Um, And she just, it's just like such a classic supporting lady performance Mm -hmm. that I think is Mm -hmm. uh, like kind of missing in the modern day. And so I just want to lift her up in this category. Absolutely. A wonderful nomination. We celebrate Helen Broderick. RJ. I'm, I'm annoyed because Adam mentioned it, but he didn't pick it. Um, Robin. So I was trying to be like, should I pick someone else that hasn't been mentioned? But yeah, Robin DeJesus was my favorite uh, supporting performance in Tick, Tick, Boom, because he does such a great job of um, obviously bringing in kind of the stakes for for uh, the Jonathan Larson character of like what it what what could his like big break or like his gift could mean. Mm-hmm. Um and it inspired rent. But I think Robin Day Seuss did such a great job of of being brave and scared at the same time in this mm. performance, which yeah. I think was it's very hard to do. Um and it was a performance that I was very frustrated that I felt like didn't get enough talk yes, when, totally. when the movie came out. And that I think is an important part of being a best supporting actor is leaving people feeling like they want more. Yeah. I yeah. want to quickly, if we're talking about Tick Tick Boom, also just shout mm-hmm. out Alexander Ship who played Susan because she was also phenomenal. Yeah. Oh she, yes. Star of Barbie. Part. Star of um, Barbie. Oh, she Barbie. Yeah, she's yes. one of the Barbies. I haven't seen I haven't seen Barbie everyone. Please feel free to write in and tell me why I'm wrong. I believe she's the rocket scientist Barbie. Oh, okay. Yes, I think that's right. Um I think we gotta give it to Ram Dezus based on it coming I, up you made a very compelling muscle. argument rj yeah thank you so yeah we'll give you we'll give you that first win girl i did um the oh no we didn't we all did lin manuel <laughs> yeah we all did <laughs> i was gonna say the opera house but that's right we didn't we picked gene didn't pick, pick it sorry Jean. well you had also mentioned gene though so that was kind of a half, yes. half win for us yes. at the end of this we will tally up who won the most uh, awards <laughs> It's not cheap to make a film. It, it, it can mm. be very expensive. And sometimes you need to partner with maybe specific products or specific industries in order to get some funding to make your movie. So these are nominees for best portrayal of product placement in a film. In a movie musical, actually, specifically. Okay, I said all that. And now I'm going to actually tell you that I brought it out a little bit because I couldn't remember specific items specific in any movies. Uses, I mean, yeah, absolutely. We wrote, can you look up, RJ, can you go back and see if we can shout out, did people leave their names on mm-hmm. the ballots or no? Okay. Well, if you wrote yeah. this one in, you know who you are. Um, okay, so here are, here are the ones I was thinking about for product placement. Um, okay, I, I thought of um, the Wonka bars. Okay, oh. from Willy Wonka. And and the not only that, but the fact that the whole movie was basically a product placement for right, their, the their new yeah, the whole marketing movie. arc. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was great. That I didn't pick it. I thought about uh, Gypsy's use of Chinese food because I oh. that whole movie I just wanted Chinese food. But at the end of the day, I think Newsies makes a compelling case for print media. <laughs> And so I, <laughs> I am choosing <laughs> I'm choosing print wow, media amazing. in newsies. Yeah. Wow. Wow, what a take. That's what I'm going um with. I was nervous about this category, but Adam assured me that he went for a more general take because I also couldn't remember mm-hmm. a specific product getting placed. Um right. I would have done this differently had I known the order because I feel like I just talked about this, but um I'm gonna say just the concept of roller skating in Xanadu, I think was strong product placement really trying to make a movement happen and so it has to be shouted out here because also product mm-hmm. placement can be like if you want if you leave and you're like oh, i want to go do that thing that they were doing in the movie right yeah right. yeah that's great rj it's not easy to put product placement in a song okay okay Sure. But Miss Legally Blonde did the thing. Oh, Delta. Or no, um, not Delta. Um, and we all flew here from Jet, in JetBlue. Thank you. Thank you. Jet and then Blue. one of the ensemble members in a JetBlue flight attendant costume doing, thank you. You gotta. I and will we, say I also yeah. picked, I also picked Wonka, but I went more literal of like, I was trying to really think about like an actual 
said brand. <laughs> yeah. It was very interesting to fly into Boston Logan International Airport this September and mm. realize that it is a JetBlue hub. JetBlue hub. And so that I- is why that joke exists. And I was like, oh, oh, it's actually funnier than I thought it was. Um, did it Adam's legally- first time in Boston, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Oh, man. Um, didn't Legally Blonde also have like was it Monster Energy Drink or Red Bull or something? There was like an energy Red drink Bull. that got, Red that got Bull. Bull. I mean, a couple times. I mean, UPS yeah. is also, he, he's a UPS <gasps> driver. Yeah. I think yeah. it's the whole, I think it's I all think of it's like, honestly, the whole thing. <laughs> and it felt like they leaned extra hard into it for the MTV broadcast. Yes, so I do absolutely. think that that is most definitely our strongest case of like actual product placement. Right. I think right. so too. I think just the film as a whole or the, the piece as a whole. Yeah. Great. Are we in agreement? I think, yeah, I think, yeah, we I think so. Blonde, for sure. Right. Also promoting Harvard Law. I mean, who would heard of that before? Legally no, Blonde? no one ever Pretty went before, yeah. before that movie yeah. came out. Yeah. <laughs> the Aristotelian ideal of beauty, a parade of women around a stage for the audience to gawk at, typically regaled in plumage and sequence. This is the best Follies number. <laughs> okay. We've so, established that it is not a movie musical without a funny snow. It's true. Yeah. So but it's I very also, important to us. We have established that, but we did watch a lot that really did not have any really didn't. kind yeah. of Follies number in it. So I had to, you know, again, zoom out, broaden mm, my horizons. A bit. Yeah. So um, I considered Lovely Ladies in Les Misérables, uh, kind of, you know, the the syphilitic version yeah. of a Follies number. Or like almost an opposite Follies number. Sure. It's an antithesis. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I thought of the obvious let me entertain you, even though it's just one person. I think she does a great mm. job of commanding everybody to watch yeah. her. Um, and that whole montage is so many different outfits that it's basically one big Follies number, yeah. even though the she's one doing one it alone. Follies number. Yeah. But what I went with and go with me on this uh-huh. is the opening of nine, the overture della donna. Oh. Where each of the women come out and get a moment to like strike a pose or whatever. Yes. That is that is what I chose. That's a strong that's a strong pick. I like that. Um yeah. That's that's it. Um <laughs> my nomination really was the worst for me, but I think it was maybe the best in terms the best of, of the category. Uh, a, a category which is the clothes being animated in bed knobs and broomsticks. <laughs> Oh my God, you're so right. It is a Follies number. <laughs> because it truly is. I mean, what could be more about the clothes than, oh my God. Just, than just clothes. pants? Than than just, just clothes pants. and pants. Just um, stockings. What is that song called? Literal stockings on their own. So I um, just felt like it had to be, it had to be nominated. Uh, uh, it's the spell name. It's the spell. Uh, no, it's substitutionary locomotion. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Famously. Substitutionary locomotion. That's not how the song is. Uh, Substitutionary locomotion. It's like that. That's the sure. that's the beat. That's a the real beat. hummable tune. You I know, could not, I could not sing a single song from Brendan to Bruce Dix for a million dollars right now. <laughs> Great, RJ. Uh-huh. What's your what's your nomination? I went with the song "You Gotta Get a Gimmick" from Gypsy. Um, although like Ooh. just really three outfits, but I think it was interesting to kind of like let the, like, what if a Follies number, they like spoke and talked about themselves. Like it was very like looking inward of like, look, I'm Electra, I'm Tessitura. Like, yeah. look at me. This is my Follies. Well, bit. I think, I think the fact that there is a female perspective in it might rule it out as a Follies number though, I to know. be honest. It's the too, idea it's that there's knowing. any interiority it's to it is, is you know, <laughs> too much not, reflection. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if, if it's based on the male gaze, I feel like, there's no more male gaze than fucking Guido Spumoni yeah, or whatever the nine. fuck his name is. <laughs> yeah. I do think I think that that is the best genuine. Yeah. The like, whole movie was a Follies number. Follies. Yeah, I think really? that that's got to be the winner. And I will say, if you had chosen, I would have maybe sided with Molly if you had chosen the when all of the like medieval costumes come to life. Come to in, life too. Yes. In, yeah. in bed I thought about it, Just the that, spell itself. That is that is really a battle sequence. And so it felt that's like true, it was less true. in the spirit of a Paulus number than a, you know, clumsy, let's get these clothes going is more sort of the comedy <laughs> sure. elements that we <laughs> brought from Funny Girl, you know? Yes. That was Ziegfeld's true, um, like, true, like, idea that he had in his mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just for the bodies to be invisible. <laughs> right. 
I don't, I don't know. Yeah, probably not for, for, for you two, maybe you wish the body yeah, was yeah. visible. That's not what you're in it for. But for other people watching it, that's not what they're looking for out of a college number. Um, so nine? Is that, nine. Okay, nine. great. Congrats to nine. Congrats to Guido. Guido, Guido, Guido. Reincarnation. Rebirth. Revival. Getting the chance to re-inspect these movie musicals and see if Adam and RJ got it right the first time. The chance of a lifetime. These are the best revival options for a revival episode. Great. All right. This was... uh, There's so many that I want to do again, but we can only limit ourselves to one. So I was thinking about what do I need to hear Molly talk about? This is Mm. this is what keeps coming up in my mind. What do I need? So um, I did think of Sound of Music because it was our first one. And I think I just want to go back to it at some point because I I'm sure I've grown a lot since 2014 when we recorded it. Uh, I thought of Chicago because as much as we've discussed Chicago and everything that came in its wake in the early aughts to mid aughts, uh, we have not all three discussed Chicago. Mm. And I think there's a listener that wants us to do Chicago. But I went with High School Musical. (laughs) Wow. I started with Grease and then I was like, no, I want to hear her talk about I want to watch. I want to make her watch High School Musical again because I'm assuming you've seen it. Oh, sure. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And really go to town on it. And is it as good as Zombies 3? We'll never know. No, I can tell you right now it's not. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. That's a, that's a choice. Um, (laughs) We're not going to match this year like we did last year. (laughs) I didn't re-listen to last year's. So I feel like this might be what I said last time as well. Mm. Um, But I would like to say that I want to commit right now that whatever episode we choose i will go and listen to your original episode and make an outline oh. of responding to the points made yes. in the original recording great um and so i would like to i'm guessing yet again propose moulin rouge a movie <laughs> that i love and adam hates and great. i feel that that is we have learned the best dynamic for this podcast and so <laughs> yes <laughs> well, i think people it will keep make, tuning in i think it will make the strongest episode Mm. I think that, uh, you know, I'd like just I'd like to know, Adam, if anything has grown and changed for you over time. And maybe mm. for me, too. Maybe I will watch it as a person in my 30s and get motion sickness and not not want to engage <laughs> in the same way. But uh, mm. I would be enthusiastic if we were to do Moulin Rouge. Mm. Maybe maybe I feel differently now that I've seen bad versions of what he's trying to do in Moulin Rouge. I've seen people try to do their version, like their take on like greatest showman is clearly inspired by Moulin Rouge and I hate yeah. greatest showman. So maybe I'll appreciate Moulin Rouge because it actually is doing it well. Right. Maybe you never know. RJ, what was your choice? So I went with, um, I was really focusing in on like, what have we learned in the journey so far with our two seasons without Molly and like, even with just like all these movies that we've seen, And it always feels like we always keep coming back to this one movie, right? That we did, but we weren't able to, like in that first season, that we kind of like, almost like keep comparing things to, like we always keep thinking that like, we always keep going back to it. Um, And so I did pick Moulin Rouge because we always keep Uh, saying that that we keep seeing things or the the ones that we haven't liked are the ones that are like, they're trying to do a a messy Baz Luhrmann, like across the universe was like the big one that like, I want to like, see like, well, what is what let's define what makes it good. Why it's, it's so beloved, even if you like it or not, like why, what is it about Baz's style? That Mm -hmm. actually works. That people keep trying to emulate for other things when it feels like they don't know how to interpret something into a film. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much for supporting me in this way, RJ. I really (laughs) appreciate it. I can't believe Molly's choice has won twice in a row. I know. Because last year we, last year you and I said Phantom of the Opera together. Really? I said Music Man. You know what? Probably it was me again remembering a movie that I. You love really unapologetically liked. for yeah. no real reason. And so yeah. that's that's why I was thinking. Well, you love Paris. Paris. I do. I've been there most <laughs> of the time. <laughs> 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 Je sais Paris. 
So this is a listener submitted category. This is, and I will read the whole title of this award. Thank you very much. Oh no, you're you're you are forced to join a polycule made up of a movie musical's entire cast of characters. This is the best polycule award. So you're in now, a relationship with everyone. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, for the moms, could we please define what a polycule is? I'd go ahead. Uh, I will try. It is a relationship <laughs> in which there are multiple people, and I believe. No, it's not necessarily that everybody in the polycule is in a relationship with one another, but it's like a unit to describe the complexities of polyamorous amorous relationships. And so to say, like, everyone who is connected by the various relationships people have mm. are in the polycule. It's, it's the, like, umbrella term of the whole unit. The whole unit without necessarily defining every relationship within every relationship. that unit. Yeah. It is an April Ludgate. This is my boyfriend and this is my boyfriend's boyfriend. Right. Together, they are a polycule. Yes. Yes. But she, but it doesn't necessarily mean like every person is connected directly or like has a relationship. That is my understanding. RJ, it's crazy that you just said umbrella term because the Google definition. Okay. Polycule is an umbrella term which describes a connected network of people and relationships, all of whom are in some way involved emotionally, sexually, or romantically with at least one other person within the polycule. Each polycule or part within it can have its own structures, boundaries, and connections. And our boundary for this is these these are the adult characters. These are all the adult characters. I don't yes. think it shows any. Oh, well, I guess there are uh, kids in one of them. But there are there are at least some kids in a lot of these movies. And so we're just across the board saying if there are kids, we're excluding them from the answers. I yeah. I OK. In other categories, I've broadened out in this one. I did. I did narrow in a bit and okay. I narrowed in to oh, maybe narrow in a, the polycule. Yeah. I narrowed maybe not in the, the polycule to maybe the, the group that I was looking forward to doing this with. Oh yeah. So one option were the sailors in South Pacific. Oh um, yeah. Out of necessity, you know, and to just get thrown around by a bunch <laughs> of strapping men. Wouldn't have be seen, a problem. Have you seen the SNL skit of like the NFL players that are doing charity work by just throwing people's girlfriends around? No. <laughs> <laughs> Women who just need to be picked up sometimes. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> um, I thought of uh, all of the muses from Xanadu mm. because they mm. were so pretty that I was like, well, something. There's something there. Um, but I actually am going with all of the diner patrons in Tick Tick Boom. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Your mind. I, I, but also like it is the patrons as characters, but it's also not, not the actors portraying those yeah. characters. <laughs> so Bernadette. <laughs> Welcome. So that's yeah. what I chose. Molly. Um, I want to say the reason that I brought up the children thing is that my first instinct is to say Newsies because when I watched it as a child, I was into like every single Newsie that there was. Um, <laughs> but it is weird now that I'm a grown up. So I feel like I can't say that for that reason. Mm. Um, so I'm going to go with the women of nine because it basically oh. already <laughs> is that. And I think if you're going to do polyamory, do it messy. You know what I mean? Sure. It would be the most dramatic, most complicated version of it. And so... Mm -hmm. I say lean in a hundred percent and just go for nine. Great. Go for nine. <laughs> Some say go for eight and a half, but we say go for nine. Yeah. I went with the three lovely ladies of do re mi. <gasps> uh, they just bring such a great balance that if it was, you know, uh, uh, creating an actual family unit, I would trust these three women. Oh, sure. So a like structure. create an actual a structure, absolutely. Yeah. Because RJ thinks women are deficient, and so he needs three of them in order to make a single family unit. Is what he is saying. <laughs> it takes no, a, it takes I, a village. It takes a village. Yeah. Yes, I am. I I would be so weak, so I would just uh, rely on the three women around me to do to protect me. Great. Well, we're not picking that. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. So RJ, um, what are you picking <laughs> between me and Molly? What are you picking, RJ? <laughs> what did you say again? It's on the Google Doc, girl. Oh, you already wrote it down. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> as much as I love the patrons, mm -hmm. I I would be very well. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. You yeah. are. You gotta really patrons. think about this. I know. They are patrons, but also as themselves as the actors. It's all of the above. 
But yeah. in nine, it is the characters. It's these nine. Correct. Characters. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would be too. I would be in in reverence to the actors so much that I wouldn't want to be involved with them that closely. So I mm. think I'll just go with nine. Okay. And make it like I would be a person who would make a mess out of like the person that I work with. You know, I can't even go to a single I can't even watch a, a single daily and not like want to fuck the girl that I <laughs> watch. You know what I mean? Like sure. might as well just go insane. Great. And treat my French wife poorly and not pay, give her any attention so that she can belt at me at a theater. <laughs> But is it fashion? This category <laughs> is best performance by a parentheses party city and parentheses wig. Uh, this is a listener submitted category for uh, a wig that did the most um, in the movies that we watched this season. And uh, I believe we're taking the party city element of this, you know, in spirit, but not necessarily in uh, actuality. In, yes. That, that some wigs will be of higher quality than others, but we know that wigs can do a lot of work in a movie musical. Absolutely. It's not, it's not necessarily in the rubric, but if you want to, you can. Yeah. Great. Um, okay. I thought of uh, Addison's white hair in Zombies 3. Mm. Ooh. Not, not only a great wig, but a plot point. A three film <gasps> reveal know. we learned. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was the all of the movies led up to that wig. That is that's a Chekhov's that's, wig, if I've ever yes, heard of one. Yeah, Chekhov's wig. wig. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Um, I thought of the foam wigs specifically from Priscilla because they're yeah, such a staple of Australian drag. Scene. Yes, like yeah. Australian drag is foam, keeping yes. foam alive. Yeah, um, probably probably better than Styro ever could. You know what I mean? Sure. So stupid. You Just, tried. Okay, but here's my actual <laughs> nomination. I went with um, Judy Dench's fuck ass Bob oh! in nine. <laughs> well, maybe nine is walking Molly's, away with multiple. Molly's nemesis. I brought her up once on this episode <laughs> that Adam opened the door this time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, when I thought of, okay, it is really a fuck ass I, Bob. What I'm it's leaning really into. Is is the party city portion yes. of the yeah. category yes. with this nomination. Um, it's bad. It's a horrible wig. It's She is a short, small woman, mm -hmm. and this makes her look even shorter and small. Like, it's so and she puts a And she puts a party city hat on it. She does. So, like, you yeah. get everything in party city. That, that performance, her song specifically, is a party city performance. Performance. It yeah. gives it gives go back to party city where you belong. You yeah. Know? yeah. 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 So that's my nomination. <laughs> that fuck ass Bob. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a fuck ass Bob. <gasps> um, uh, Molly. I leaned out from the party city element, um, but mm. I chose what I think is a wig might be real hair, but but hair that is it is dramatic and it is making the part. And that is B. Arthur's hair in Mame. <gasps> oh, the black oh. bob with the severe bangs. I mean, yes. it's probably the best thing about the whole film. So <laughs> I have to nominate it. Great. RJ? I think we're sensing a pattern of the, the style and the shape style. of the bob. The <laughs> style oh, yeah, yeah. Bobs are trend alert. Yeah. It is. Because wait hold on are you trying to find a third yeah I'm, I'm trying to find the picture okay here we go okay. I have the link there is a BuzzFeed article that that ranked all of the looks of Priscilla Queen of the Desert mm. and I will drop it in the chat because I was like it's gonna be I was like I'm picking from Priscilla it is just yeah uh, the 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 two dollar budget that they had but still were able to create like these crazy looks um if you scroll to number six they sported emu 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 looks oh yes where they had the big emus on their head as part of the um oh, wow. you got me feeling emotions. but i'm actually going to go with the party city um 
the party city aspect of it. And on number 12, the opening number look, Adam in this like gross wow. black bob wearing this like pearl dress and like a thong. Sure. That I is mean, giving if, like amateur yeah. drag night. And it's just drag oh, on a dime. Shake and I go. got a dime. Shake and go. No, barely shook. <laughs> it forgot to shake. It's just wet. <laughs> it's funny because it's the shape. If if it was like a woman with a big head, it would be a bob. It Something would be a bob. The yeah. shape is bob, but the length is shoulder le- it's a shoulder yeah. length bob. <laughs> shoulder length bob. Yes. it's very weird it's it's someone else's bob <laughs> yeah well it's clearly like three wigs because there's yeah. so much volume to it yeah yeah but all equally uh like low quality oh yeah <laughs> the qua- the quantity didn't increase the quality whatever the equivalent was of an amazon wig in yeah in 1993 in, in ni- or whatever yeah 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 well, I think if we've narrowed it down to artificial bobs, that this is clearly the most party city of the three. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think this deserves the award, probably. Great. If I did like a well, it's hard because some of these like are headdresses, not necessarily wigs. Because yeah. I was thinking, like, should I award like a good headpiece? Because I was gonna, I really like their flower looks. I um, love their flower yeah. looks. The flower yeah. jumpsuit looks like mm-hmm. it's like yeah. a paper mache wig almost. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, but this, but this fuck ass Bob <laughs> really seals the deal. <laughs> is there anything to uh, them all being Bobs? Is it just, is, should the winner just be Bobs? Wigs that are Bobs? You know, that's great. All, we are we're coming for every bob wig oh, yes <laughs> that's what we're doing. Bobs. i wish yeah. there was an ai that we could access that could scan all of the movies that we watched for specifically bob length hair yeah yeah then, hit with a uh, chat gpt what are, what yeah. are you doing what are we Passing doing our exam that's not yeah. helping me <laughs> writing code I, just, writing co- I don't need that i need to see bobs yeah bobs and famously i wore i have a i had to buy a bob this year for our other uh show, show. I wore it for an episode. <laughs> yes. You know who looks great in a bob? Not Ooh. Adam. <laughs> Magna persona. That's Latin for important person. And without these people in these performances, all would have been lost for these films. This is the most VIP performance. Now we had in the first season had a lot of confusion about the the actual you know category of vip but i think since we do a vip no we do an mvp an mvp <laughs> so then I'm, I'm back to being confused <laughs> it, it's well, very clear well here's what i'll read i'll read you last year's nominations in okay. case anyone remembers yeah uh molly chose chose joel gray i chose debbie reynolds and RJ chose background lady. So I don't know, I don't know if there's anybody. I think we need to look Christmas inward. On the, square, I believe. The, the background lady from Christmas on the Square. No, the yeah, entire time. Yeah. No, I'm, telling the, I'm telling the audience that, uh, okay, okay. that we kept thinking they were going to be an important character. Like we right. thought they were going to be the love interest of the older guy. Yeah. But it turns out she was just loud and could really steal the scene from, yeah. <laughs> from the back. So I think we're pointing out here is that RJ doesn't understand what the category <laughs> is, but Molly and Adam do. So Molly and Adam are going to go first. To be fair, also, don't we call it this because at one point we just confused we MVP did. with VIP. We did. Yes, because yeah. okay. Adam kept going back and forth between MVP and VIP. Yeah. So um, So I think the fault originally goes to Adam. Mm. <laughs> Club 96. Okay. So for these, uh, these, the for these, for these. I thought of Gene Wilder from Willy Wonka. Mm-hmm. You're just going to name every VIP performance again. I thought of Cher from mm-hmm. Mamma Mia. Here we go again. But I went... VIP, VIP. VIP, but I went... I think of the whole season, I think this is the performance that really <laughs> solidifies her place in the Rasta. <gasps> okay. I thought of Mini Driver in Phantom of the oh, Opera. VIP. Mm-hmm. Doing doing a lot with a little. Yeah. Yeah. That's my nomination. Um, well, I feel like maybe I was not in the spirit of things in picking a lead over a supporting, because you list a lot of supporting folks there. Um, but I'm gonna nominate Andrew Garfield in Tick Tick Boom. Mm. I ah. feel like he really 
surprised me with his performance in that in terms of how much I cared about the character and could could be invested in him. I think it's particularly hard to be a celebrity and playing like an unknown person and and have everyone forget that you're a celebrity. I mean, this is always a problem when you're a celebrity of like kind of disappearing into a role at all. But like, it's particularly hard when like the role is about, I don't know if anyone will ever appreciate me as an artist when you like know that that person is an actor that is known, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And I felt almost like we... He was so clearly good that we like didn't even give him enough attention in the episode. Um, and so it's just it's the performance, I think, that most stands out to me as I reflect back on on the year of just like what a solid job of just leading the film. Amazing. Yeah, that's great. I agree. Um, I picked in the same vein of like the IP, very important performance that if it wasn't this person, mm-hmm. I don't think the movie would have the impact that it did mm-hmm. which background character did you pick this time <laughs> i'm picking b arthur in mame mm. like, that is a performance that you can't imagine truly anyone else doing like, yeah. that is that is hers yeah mm-hmm. totally i'm inclined to go with rj's pick because yeah. i feel that mame won't win any other yeah. one <laughs> also that <laughs> So no uh favorite christmas song <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's, um, I, i'm fine with going with b arthur you know yeah. i love b arthur yeah of course Great. like i mean the thing you said of like doing a lot doing and achieving a lot with doing very little like she would just look she would just look and yeah, the, yeah. we were all laughing <laughs> yeah that's her that's her that was uh, half her of her comedy this- gig yeah her in the bathtub, like just fully dressed dr- with a, yeah. a glass in her hand and with the water falling on her. Yeah. Uh, great. Oh, God. Her physical Gem. comedy. Yeah. In a movie that's not very good, she is a she great is part like, of that film. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Because I remember we were like, we want more B. Arthur. <laughs> Give yes. me more scenes with Vera Charles. She has to have done other movie musicals at some point. We've got to find somewhere B. Arthur to watch for this pod. It's funny because she. On Broadway, I think she originated the role of the matchmaker in Fiddler on the Roof. Ah. Mm. Um, and I would have loved if she had been able to do that on screen. But I think the tone of that seems the a little movie, wrong the movie for how that very, movie actually like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. is very dark. Or not dark, but re- realistic. Realist, yeah. yeah. We're going to move on to what we're, you know, what are generally known as the Governor's Awards <laughs> for the segment of the pod. Um, each of us have awarded an individual award that we have created, categorized, chosen. There is no nomination. They are just getting this award. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go first. Um, so I have come up with an award. This is the Magellan Award for Most Damage Done to Asians and Asian Americans in a Movie Musical. And shockingly, it's a four-way tie between The King and I, Mame, The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, and South Pacific. They have all won this award for really doing damage to the characterization of Asians and Asian American people in movie musicals, unfortunately. I really was looking at this list today because I was like, what's something fun I can do? And then I was like, why did we have so many that had like really (laughs) negative portrayals of Asian people? And if you want to go even further, I thought about the fact that um, in Phantom, in the book, the guy is... The, yes. Ar- the Arab yeah. or the Persian yeah. or whatever. The Turk or something. Yeah. Something yeah. awful where it's like, yeah. Jesus, what are we doing? So yeah. just like. And then the very, uh, the Japanese face in Dora Me. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Do you know what? <laughs> I listened back to that episode and I realized we kept teasing the yellow face scene and then we never actually we talked, never talked about, about it. it. I, we remember, I, like, I don't want to talk about it. I remember it. when I edited it, I was like, oh, we just fully we forgot to talk totally about forgot it. forgot it. Yeah, it's listeners, funny. there's a scene where they take pictures where they're trying to make it look like they went to Japan and they just like do the full geisha like, version yeah. of Japanese people. And it's it's shocking, honestly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So a five way, six way tie is a four way tie. Well, it's unless almost, it's almost incalculable at this point. Well, yeah, I guess if we're including if we're <laughs> including the, do re mi. Yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. it's a five way tie. Yeah. And Mame just, had Ito, in case people forgot what I'm talking about in Mame, <laughs> the butler. That's who we're talking about. 
Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here today to present the Dr. Matiny Award for Worst Take on Feminism. Um, I would like to also shout out that one of our listeners did submit a category of worst portrayal of a woman in a movie. Um, and, you know, it's tempting to just do all of nine. And that's what I picked. Yeah. When you were thinking about it. <laughs> and, I, and I actually I went into this evening intending to give this award just to Federico Fellini for his comments about how he doesn't like well, feminism are, because basically. he just loves women too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But because Knife has gotten a surprising amount of attention on this episode um, and <laughs> Fellini's comments were ultimately context of the film, not the film itself. I feel that ultimately I actually have to give it to Cinderella. Um, <gasps> she was my other nomination. Um, <laughs> yes. The, the least, only nomination. Yeah. The least substantive take I could imagine on yeah. uh, what it means to be a woman in the world in 2023. So, uh, you know, <laughs> congratulations, Cinderella, for for having won a single award for the evening. Amazing. Good job. Congrats to congrats to Jeff Bezos. Congrats, congrats to, to Cinderella. To, congrats, congrats to Bezos. Congrats to Alexa. Congrats to all of them. Yeah, absolutely. Apologies if we set off anybody's home Apologies. pods there. <laughs> home home machines. I well, I think one of the one of the big themes that always come up when I am watching these movies for show gays is sometimes I feel very self conscious of like. I don't like a movie that a lot of people like or enjoy. And their reasoning is like, well, it's just fun. Like, it's just a fun movie. And like, you don't have to think about it so seriously. But this podcast has really helped me kind of um, develop that critical lens. And what I think really boils down to is that if I'm seeing that the creators who and, and the production team and just the people behind that put you know, millions and millions of dollars into a movie are having fun and treat their source material as fun. They think it's fun. Everyone's having a good time. Then I feel like I also can have a good time. Sometimes it, you can you watch a movie musical and you can tell that there are people who don't like it, like directors or like the screenwriter. or mm-hmm. You just feel it in the bones of the movie that makes Annie. you not. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yes. Like Annie was our, our great example of last season that I felt like this season we watched movies that I could feel everyone was having fun with, which let me kind of let that go of like, okay, it may not be, you know, plot, like, you know, the plot is thin, but I'm having fun. Um, So the, I didn't have a clever name for it. I just, it was just so desperate of like, um, what did I call it? I lost it. Oh, there it is. Everyone should just be having fun award. Mm -hmm. I will say, Honorable mention to Mamma Mia, here we go again. That's because what that I thought you were setting up. Oh my gosh, okay. See, because that is definitely a movie that everyone was having fun. But <laughs> through this podcast, I really I also, hope you say like lame is. <laughs> I also, through this podcast, no, it's not. Through this podcast, I also learned that not everyone has, you know, fond feelings for ABBA. I think with mm. Molly and also, you know, watching Bernadette in Priscilla Queen of the Desert and even like, just how they talk about ABBA in, in Priscilla Queen of the Desert of like the fanaticism can get super crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't pick that, but I will bring that up as an honorable mention. I will be giving this award to Z-O-M-B-I-E-S-3. Sure. I yeah. just, you know, you're already at a level of commitment for all these people that are like, it's going to be three movies. This is the third movie. Let's. It's Now it's Aliens. And even though we've only seen this one, um, it just felt like it was a, a breath of fresh air that like, oh, look, people just are having fun doing what they're doing. The aliens look like they're having a blast playing aliens, you know, like it's just it was I just great. Wa- I want to make it clear to everyone listening to this. If you didn't listen to our Zombies 3 episode and you've never seen this movie, it's probably the one movie that we all three will agree is like a great time and you should just go watch because it's fun. You just should watch it. It's I think the reason that we feel so strongly about it is that it's one that we picked assuming it would be bad. Yes. And it was the exact Absolutely. opposite. Truly. Yeah. The songs was, are good. Yeah. The performances yeah. are fun and funny. It was the best RuPaul version is of mothership. I mean, yes. come on. RuPaul is mothership. I mean, that was a VIP. Yeah. Yeah. I did almost pick VIP. <laughs> Ru. Yeah. Um, 
we now turn to our, we want to promote our accountants from PricewaterhouseCooper. RJ is speaking on behalf <laughs> of them today, and he will be um, telling us what the people have chosen for the ensemble's choice for favorite showgaze episode. This is so exciting. Yes. So um, we have uh, given an uh, an award to the um, the listener's favorite episode. And I made it very specific that it is the showgaze episode, not necessarily the movie musical. It is our episode, our conversation, what we've brought up, what we've talked about mm -hmm. and their favorite. So I'm going to read you the um, top three. Let's say top three. In third place with 13% of the vote is Priscilla, Priscilla, the Prestige. adventures, <laughs> Prestige, the adventures of Priscilla, queen of the desert. Okay. Which is very contentious because not a movie musical. <laughs> <laughs> True. In, and I, I think like that, um, even though not a movie musical, like we all very heralded as like a great movie and we talked at length. About yes, it. I believe that is our longest episode to date. Yeah. Oh, I mean, wow. that was one of the last ones where I still had library access and did some actual research for it. And <laughs> so I'm guessing people enjoyed some of that context. And we talked a lot yeah. about like the queer experience, which is like, you know, what we build Boring. this podcast as. Well, we, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> perspective we're bringing to the movies. <laughs> Absolutely. In a second place. Do you think 18... there's a queer context oh. with Priscilla Queen of the Desert? It's really subtle. Um, and maybe yeah. you need to go back and listen to the episode again to oh, kind of pick okay, up okay. on some of the hints. Oh, yeah. Cool. She was okay. a lesbian, the owner of the casino. I don't know if you noticed was, that, but that yeah. was, that was the, the yeah. representation. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. 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 Um, in Second place with 18% of the vote is Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Very interesting because <laughs> I I literally had to be like, what did we talk about? We talked about how great it was. That's what we talked about. Yeah. I mean, a real different type of episode than Priscilla, for sure. We, these are yeah. two different parts of the listener base, I think. That are <laughs> yes, absolutely. Inside you are two wolves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Mamma Mia you feed. Yes. <laughs> It's the mama Mia it's the we ma took. The mama you feed becomes <laughs> the Mia. <laughs> it's the mamas that we meet along the way. Yeah. Very famously. <sighs> and finally, the winner of the first ever Ensemble's Choice for Favorite Showgaze episode for the 2023 season with 22% of the vote. It is Gypsy. Wow. wow. Yeah, right? I think by really going wow. through, I mean, analyzing that Rosalind Russell performance and how complicated that character is, but it portrayed so well. And I think, I mean, truly, I think it's the everything's coming up Rosa scene. Like we really dissected yeah. that for every inch. Beat by beat. <laughs> for, for every, yeah, every centimeter of that role, that film role. That it was interesting. <laughs> it's interesting yeah. that, I guess, I guess Mama Mia, here we go again. There was a bit of, you know, Molly didn't like it. We liked it, but I think it yeah, was so less it was less than the original Mamma Mia. Yeah, that's true. So I do th find it interesting because I like when we uh, you like disagree. More fun? I, okay, I okay. like when we disagree, but I think our listeners like when we are really enamored with something, it sounds or, like. Yeah, just like yeah. go all in, like in I, deep. Yeah, I thought that they were going to pick one where we all didn't like the movie. I was predicting Cinderella because I thought that yeah. that was maybe going to be people's like funny. reference yeah. is us goofing on a film, basically. Yeah. But if the film has been goofed enough, I think they... That's true. Cinderella was if maybe the film was a goof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, but the... the set, spoken. But under that, um, just like super quickly, fourth place was a tie between Newsies and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So... Mm. Oh, so wow. Nostalgic there you go. Factors That's our there, top five. Sure. Wow. Well, thanks for everyone for voting. It's really fun to hear y'all's perspectives and have you be part of the show in this way. And that yeah. we haven't just been talking to no one for the past two years. <laughs> This is the Corden Award for Worst Performance in a Movie Musical. <laughs> Mugging for the camera, misunderstanding the text, sounding like Russell Crowe. All these and more <laughs> are reasons to be deserving of the prestigious Corden Award for Worst Performance in a Movie Musical. Here are my, who's here I was thinking about? Um, I, okay, shockingly, I don't think there were many horrible performances yes mm. i had the same yeah. feeling i had to really think about it i did even, too even my nemesis wasn't standing out in no, performance. A, no yeah yeah, totally. as, yeah 
most mid performance. Oh, I, we would have a full stack. Oh, yeah. I mean, we a twenty four way tie <laughs> between mid, every it's movie. It's a mid season. It's what yeah, we're yeah. getting. That's what we've learned. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I thought of Rosano Brazzi from South Pacific as Emile Debet mm-hmm. Debeck, mm-hmm. purely for the fact that this man did not sound French at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Period. He sounded like an Italian man because he was and is probably just was. Uh, I thought of. For me, I think I talked about it on an episode. I did not like Forrest Whitaker and Jingle Jangle. Yeah. I did not yeah. like that performance. Yeah. It felt so phoned in. It felt not good. Like, yeah. You should say that. Uh, but I went with I went with Hugh Jackman from Les Mis. Wow. Because the more I think about it, whoa, I am not I am not affected by his performance. I am affected by the songs and the like lyricism of those songs. And it's not hit. like bring him home should be a point at which like everyone cries. And I, yeah. he is so overwrought. Yes. That it's like, Oh my God, I can't, I just can't. So I, I, I will really, say, yeah, it's tough. I will say that there was a listener category we didn't end up doing, which was most over dramatic performance. And mm-hmm. I had written down Hugh Jackman as mm-hmm. my pick for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's mine. Molly. Um, you know, I hate to say it, but my nominee is in fact Donna Cruz specifically <gasps> for the child abuse discovery scene. Um, I really I almost want to nominate her and her scene partner, but I didn't even write down the name of the child actor because I just I would feel like so terrible <laughs> nominating a child in oh this category. But it's really it's performance in the broader sense of just the worst scene. Do you know what I mean? Like it is, it is the <laughs> acting, but it's, it's really more so the context and how close to that door they are as they're doing it. And the way in which it does not fit the rest of the tone of the movie, you know? So mm-hmm. it's not on Donna Cruz's shoulders specifically, but when I thought about what scene from this season stands out to me as the worst, I like worst. Yeah. Um, that was the one that I had to pick. Wow. Whoa. I, I, in, in similarly, I had her as one of my thoughts for, uh, over dramatic performance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. RJ? We were, but we like, Adam and I were, Adam was like a big sleigh. She thought, she thought she slayed the over I liked, t- I liked the soap opera-ness of it. I did yes. like that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it was hard to think about it because, you know, it was a, a sea of like just fine performances. But I will give it to one fine performance that was just so there that I barely remembered their performance. And I had to, like, look up the actual character name and everything. Um, I'm going to nominate Michael Beck, who played Sonny in Xanadu. Uh. I think he, like, did. it's the he was very, like, he's very attractive, obviously. But even to, like, the actual saying of the lines was just like oh kira i just love you i'm like what yeah. <laughs> you gotta you gotta let gotta me say emote. he was a thought for a half second for me for horniest performance i would like to also throw that yes. out there Ooh. i thought about him as well yeah yeah Ooh. um but a good a good pull there rj mm-hmm. Ooh, this is a tough this is a this tough is... category to narrow down to a win <laughs> yeah i <sighs> What's I, funny? About- I like I like the Donna Cruz performance. So I I don't think I, I can yeah, go with Molly. Okay. What I what I think is funny about the Hugh Jackman was I feel like when I first watched it, I was like, yeah, he did a good job. But it's that thing of like he fizzled throughout. It was mm-hmm. truly a, a a slow like car crash. Like it was gonna come. You know. Let's let's say this about all three of these picks. I think to <laughs> some extent, talent. they all are the no. That's not what I'm oh. saying. <laughs> Extent, they're not talented they not are talented. all the fault of the director oh, as much if not sure. more so than the performer themselves yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah i think in beck's case perhaps just casting him in the role to begin with but i think <laughs> that it is it is about how they were told to do the scenes more so yes. than a reflection of their capabilities yes and also for that reason i think jackman is a very strong choice to the point we were making earlier about z-o-m-b-i-e-s three mm-hmm. is that the expectation i have of hugh jackman is so much higher than what was actually delivered right. that i right. think he's a strong choice for the reason that you know michael beck i wasn't going into the film expecting, expecting anything, anything particular from sure. him but hugh jackman you think is going to hugh jackman was nominated for an oscar for this performance yes. and yeah. i think they got it wrong i think it's not good <laughs> so are we in agreement hugh 
I think yeah. Hugh. Well, Hugh, you didn't win the Oscar, but you won a showy. You and congratulations. A showy? You sure did. Let me say quickly also before I read this that um that was called the Corden Award for Worst Performance, and James Corden was in a movie this year and he did not get mentioned. So good on you, James. You've elevated. You you you, elevated. you turned in a mid enough performance to not be mentioned yes. in your own award. <laughs> yep. Hmm. The Audra McDonald Award for Best Performance in a Movie Musical. These performances are celebrated for their style, their depth, their limitless possibilities. Tonight, we honor these nominees. Um, okay, so I Okay. I thought of Natalie Wood for Gypsy. Mm. A wonderful performance that we talked about ad nauseum as mm-hmm. as evidenced by people loving by that the episode. winner. Yes. yes. Uh Andrew Garfield for Tick Tick Boom. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think somebody else will probably say him, so I'm not gonna pick him. I am choosing Laura Bell Bundy for Legally Blonde the Musical. Oh. Because she is a powerhouse workhorse in that show. Yeah. She has to do so much physical comedy and like make Elle goofy. And Elle in the movie is not goofy. Mm-hmm. And I think she does such a good job of still being Elle, but doing all of the broad stuff you have to do on stage to telegraph to the back of the audience. Um, I think she does a really great job of that performance. I don't love the show, but I think she's great. So I chose Laura Bell Bundy. I thought about Laura Bell Bundy. My biggest reservation in nominating her was that it was not a movie musical. It is our s- summer stock pro shot episode. Yeah, it's true. However, the fact that she left such an impression on me in a pro shot, which I feel is one of the hardest things to do yeah. to grab yeah. somebody that much through something that is like deadening the medium by filming theater. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so I, I want to agree with that take, but I'm actually going to nominate Keegan Michael Key in Jingle <gasps> Jangle for this award. Oh. Wow. He brought an energy and a delight to that role that I feel is like the thing that I remember the most now, almost a year from watching. Um, I do think perhaps my feeling about it is in part shaped by him being so great in Schmigadoon um, and Chicago. And so mm-hmm. I know that he is a person who like appreciates the the genre and has given a mm-hmm. lot to the to the category of filmed musical theater. Um But I just think that he is maybe the person who had the most fun in their role in any of these um, performances this year. So I want to nominate him. Great. The only, maybe some of the only energy in that movie comes from King and Michael Key. We enjoyed that movie. I don't want to make it sound like, no, 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 I know, but but I just mean of all the performances, I think he's the one who is, he is bringing the energy. I thought of that fucking doll. That Ricky Martin voices for horniest performance. Oh, <laughs> oh dang. Yeah. We should go back and change that to the winner. <laughs> uh, RJ. Um, okay. So I actually had, there were two that I was trying to decide and I was waiting to see like if anyone was going to say anything, um, but also like wait to see how the night panned out the way that you said see if anyone was going to say anything sounded like you just got a haircut and we like didn't mention anything <laughs> so like no one said aggressive. anything about my haircut <laughs> um first of all i think that's very uh, interesting <laughs> <laughs> no i so i also initially thought of natalie wood and gypsy mm-hmm. i think like i mean just s- that character is so like like her mom, like layered, complicated. And I think mm-hmm. Natalie Wood did a great job of portraying just how like sticky that whole situation is, but then still find like the empathy in the character to mm-hmm. like forgive her at the end to the point where we all had very deep thoughts as to like, should she have done that? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, and I think her grasp at that character was just so good. Um, I also thought of Marion Cotillard. <laughs> mm-hmm. She was like truly my favorite part of nine. I was obsessed with Marion Cotillard for years after that. And I think um, she had the best. This was not a, a category. We had a similar category that was submitted. But if there was a category for best line reading in a movie musical, it would be her saying, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. Um, but I am going to nominate um, Karen Stamp in adventures of priscilla queen of the desert yeah yeah so if there was someone that uh submitted a a category for most iconic line from a movie musical and i did look up the scene of when bernadette was um 
like consoling Adam after saving him from almost, you know, being beaten up. Uh, and she says, don't let it drag you down. Let it toughen you up. I can only fight because I've learned to I've learned to being a man one day and a woman the next is not an easy thing to do. I mean, her, her entire conversation that she has, she that talks was, about that would have been your nomination for best best line or best iconic line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my my I'm, just to show you the difference of the energy that we were bringing to this my my nomination for best iconic line was be still my beating vagina from <laughs> mama mia here we go again. i was i was gonna take it as um like i was gonna go broad with the concept of a line and just say gene wilder's fall into the somersault in willy wonka oh, so we all had very visual good line. On that one. Yeah. A visual, visual line, line. yes yeah. um i mean that whole scene where she also talks about like Sydney of like, I don't know, you know, is suburbia meant to keep them out or keep us in? Yeah. Um, mm. It's also just like very, it, I mean, we, we talked about how important and complicated also like mm -hmm. creating safe spaces for us, but then it's like, but is that, is that to what extent, like, does that mean we can't be outside, you know, like, can we not survive? Um, and I just thought that that, I mean, that whole performance was just, what a specific person. You know exactly who this person is at every like point uh, that they're shown on film. And I feel like that's like a mark of a, a great performer mm -hmm. is that you know yeah. exactly the specific human that they're trying to portray. I don't know. It's not a movie musical. But not a movie musical. It's true. We, we, did it. we did it. It's part of the yeah. season. We did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think also Adam and I's are more to do with like bringing a lot of energy to a song and that kind of thing, which are really important to movie musicals and to musicals right. in general. But I think Terrence Stamp is giving a dramatic performance on a level that neither of our nominees are. And <laughs> and I will say, like, apologies in advance to the trans community. I hope that nobody feels offended that we're picking this this actor who played a trans woman. But like yeah. I do think, as we talked yeah. about in that episode, bring such a level of like Humanity. authenticity and sensitivity right. to the role. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. There's no sense of which there, there's no feeling that Terrence Stamp is uncomfortable with the performance right. or or undercutting that Bernadette is a woman at any moment in that performance. Right. Yes. So, yep. um, yeah, I think I think that's a good pick. Great. It takes the bad to fully appreciate the good. But these nominees were real stinkers. These so are the nominees. <laughs> <laughs> these are the nominees for the 2014 Annie Award for Worst Movie Musical. Um, okay. I thought about Priscilla Queen of the Desert because it is technically not a movie musical. <laughs> Technicalities, no, no. just by tech, by pure just technicality. By pure technicality. Yes, well, I guess then we're putting Legally Blonde in there too. Yeah, Dore Me is in there too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did not pick it. Uh, I thought about Pete's Dragon. Mm. I did not pick it. I picked Cinderella <laughs> because mm. I had a, I think three and a half minute tirade <laughs> about the movie in the episode. So long to the point that my mom actually talked to me about listening to the episode and being like, wow, you really didn't like it. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> correct. I didn't. You're absolutely right. Uh, so that's my nomination is Cinderella. Molly? Um, I chose the correct answer, which is Pete's Dragon. Um, I mm. didn't even want to make a case for it because it seems so obvious to me that that is, in fact, what um, the worst movie that we've ever watched for the podcast. Mm. I will say that I oh, think... The all podcasts. Yeah, Both all seasons. the podcasts. It probably original run included as well. Um, <laughs> I I will just remind you that I believe I said in the episode that I would rather watch Cinderella a hundred times rather than you watch Peach Dragon once more. Um, and you were wrong to say it then and you're wrong to say it now. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll have to see what the listeners think. And by listeners, I mean RJ. Uh, but the correct answer to this question is Peach Dragon. RJ? Uh, oh, I'm so sorry, Molly. I picked Cinderella. No, I just and we're not I even think, in the same place, Molly. So there's no, I, there's no I gave up Cinderella <laughs> my award because I assumed it wouldn't get any other awards. Ugh. Well, you were right to give it that award, Molly. It was yeah. the worst take on feminism. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, partially why it won worst movie musical. <laughs> and truly, that is that that is that is one of the main parts as to why I just that statue scene to this day 
offends me to s- such a core. Okay, but you're looking <laughs> me in the face and you're telling me that the musical numbers in Cinderella do not have more energy than the musical numbers in Pete's Dragon. I like the bar. Dance. Name, for, name, name one, name one song in Pete's Dragon that I, you think is I, better I, than all of the songs in Cinderella. Oh. I did. I saw a dragon and candle on the water. I would say it's still it's candle better than on the water. What reality am I living in? A gay one. <laughs> this is a you know, this is a dancing queen situation all over again. For yes, me. I don't yes. understand how other people's brains work. I just can't fathom. You know okay. us gay men love them. A, a, a 30 year old woman singing <laughs> on a lighthouse for a man. <laughs> It's camp. <laughs> it's camp. <laughs> and yeah, whenever I do it, they log off the Zoom call. I don't understand. Yes. And when Molly sends us videos of her doing it at the original lighthouse in when California. When Molly does it, it takes she guys 24 hours to get back to her. <laughs> Text. I love that that was pre us recording and so the listeners yes. love no context for it. No it makes it even better. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Cinderella, congrats. You won something. You won two things. You won two things. No one would have predicted. No one ever would have predicted. Pete's dragon. Isn't it? But Molly, isn't it? Isn't it more fitting that Pete's dragon is going to walk away with nothing tonight? Unless it sweeps best movie musical. We don't know. Look, I appreciate you trying to make me feel better, but there's nothing you could say in this moment (laughs) to quell the deep rage inside of me. (laughs) Okay. Uh, When a movie musical is firing on all cylinders, it's a true work of art. These nominees should be hung in the Louvre. This is the these are the nominees for the 2021 West Side Story Award for Best Movie Musical. Also, when writing these, I was like, oh, it's funny that both the worst and the best last year were remakes of other mm. movie musicals. Good point. Yeah. Um, okay. I thought of Mamma Mia, here we go again. A movie that I've proclaimed to love extensively. I thought of Zombies 3, a movie that really delighted us. Um, but it's, I think, easily Tick, Tick, Boom as the best movie musical of the year, for sure. Mm-hmm. So that's my nominee, okay? Yeah. Um, in thinking of this category, I think if it were, like, thing that I most enjoyed, I would have gone for Z-O-M-B-I-E-S. Um, and I thought about Tick, Tick, Boom, but I do feel that Tick, Tick, Boom is... Part of what makes it so good is understanding and knowing musical theater and musical theater references. So I tried to think about this category in a way of if someone were to ask me about the best movie we've watched for the podcast, this actually happened recently. Somebody asked me like the best movie that we watched for the podcast. And I was like, well, you know, like best for me is like Newsies because there's nostalgia factor, blah, blah, blah. But like the objectively best movie, I think still that we've ever watched to me is um, Cabaret. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. in this season, the best movie that we watched was Priscilla Queen of Desert. I think Mm. that that is, if someone were to say like, what is a good movie that uses musical theater? I would have to give them Priscilla for this Mm. season. Mm. Compelling. Thank you. So I actually, we had another like listener submitted category and they called it Best all around musical talent in a movie musical, parentheses, a musical with great music, singers, dancers, etc. And I really tried to think about like, okay, like cohesively, like talent giving you a show, like just like compelling in that way, what like check the most boxes. And that's how I tried to do it. Cause I mean, you know, last year's West Side Story, we were like, we were more compelled by. Um, the challenge that it had and it like won and still felt like a brand new fresh take on the movie but still honored the original musical which I think is what we were trying to um, define for a movie musical so I also picked Tick Tick Boom just because it felt the most like in in musical theater it achieved what the challenge was to translate a musical into a movie musical. Mm -hmm. And that is a core directive of this podcast (laughs) to discuss the adaptation from stage to, to film, to film. 
So I'm obviously outvoted, but I'll say I'm not, I'm not too mad about it. I think it is. Yeah. It's a very but I, I totally agree that the best movie that we saw this year was Priscilla Queen in the Desert, mm. like 100 percent. Like, that would be the one that I would say, like, that was our best movie. If I know the person was like a musical person, I'd be like, tick, tick, boom. Yeah. Um, I just look back just to see what our how it shook out last year. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because last year, Molly and I agreed on both the worst and the best movie musicals. Oh. And RJ, yes, RJ, you said I it was, was Dear Evan liar. Hansen and Singing in the Rain were the best. Uh, yeah. Also good picks. So see, yeah. I learned, I learned from last year. I'm yep. bringing it in. Great. Wow. Another year of showies in the, in the books. In the books. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Um, we are now going to leave this Zoom recording and talk about what we're doing next year. So keep writing in with ideas. But keep writing in with ideas. Time. Yes, because, yeah. um, totally. you know, plans are flexible throughout the year. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if there's if there's something really compelling that you, you know, write a whole like like Emily, when she wrote in for zombies and she was like, I wasn't a zombie head, but I, I met the dude. And I was mm -hmm. swept away and I watched the movies and I think you should too. Stepped off my feet. Yeah. 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 Stepped off my feet by the undead. Um, let us know. Great. Well, with that, bye. Here's Lynn Manuel <laughs> Miranda performing a rap that he's been writing all night about the winners <laughs> oh, <yeah. of> tonight's <laughs> show. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the best revival of a podcast, Showgaze. You can find us on social media. Adam is at Adam Noecker on Twitter. RJ is at RJ Food Rocks on Instagram. And Molly is at Molly Matiny on Instagram. This episode was edited and mixed by Adam Noecker. This has been an Ampliverse production. You can find our show page and more information at theampliverse.com. If you'd like to send us your own takes on the movie we just watched, reach out to us via email and we might read it aloud on the show. Our email is showgazemoviemusical at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your podcasts. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to help others find the show. And now, as always, the show must go on. So stick around to hear what we're going to be watching next episode. Paris, and I'm an American who lives here. I'm a painter. All my life, that's all I've ever wanted to do. Brother, if you can't paint in Paris, you better give up and marry the boss's daughter. Oh, I have a lot of good friends in Paris. A lot of very good friends. And I am one of them. I'm a concert pianist. That's a pretentious way of saying I'm uh, unemployed at the moment. I like Paris. It's a place where you don't run into old friends, although that has never been one of my problems. Strangely enough, I made a friend over here once. I worked for him. His name was Henri Borel. You know, the French music hall star? Do you remember him? I remember, because that is me. Begin today, you'll find it nice. The quickest way to paradise I'll build the stairway to paradise Take the new step every day She's an exciting girl She's like a sunbeam When she walks down the street Everybody feels a little better Say my Wonderful, marvelous. She should care for me.
Paris is a mood, a longing you didn't know you had until it was answered. Paris is like, it's like love or art or faith. It can't be explained, only felt. Just listen to my heart go pit pat. It started from the start. I felt like that. Hum it, strum it, sing it, drum it. What a thrill I'm getting from it. Tra la 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 la.